We pray for justice over this city. We pray for the inspiration of this organization. Give us your spirit, give us your word, give us guidance and wisdom as we go forward in your name. And the people together said, Amen. 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 I want to thank Reverend uh, Merritt and all of us who are on. I want to first see if there are any persons uh, on this virtual meeting. If this is your first uh, opportunity to John Noah, if there are any, will you just give us your name? And if you are affiliated with any congregation, union, or organization. Okay, I have, I have none. So we will go on with approval of our last board minutes. If uh, someone would make a motion, if there, but if there's some corrections or addition to be added, we make those. But if someone will make a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? <clears throat> second. It has been probably moved in second that we approve the minutes. Uh, all in favor, just can get thumbs up, raise your hand, or or I. Reverend Thompson. Yes. I have a question about uh, the a figure in the minutes. Okay, which one? Uh, in the treasurer's report, it said our savings, and the figure says our savings is twenty five dollars. I just want to know if that was correct. Uh, no, that, that wouldn't be correct. Uh, $25, I don't know if that was something or a, 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 Maybe a something that had been added or a typo, but we'll make that with the necessary corrections. Okay. Good catch. And we do not have our secretary on. Uh, she's uh, with, a hospital, with a doctor's appointment and uh, she's hoping to get on soon. Uh, since we have it recorded, we will make note of that. And thank you, Grace. All right. Any other additions, corrections? I know someone seconded if you will also approve with that amendment. Well, who seconded that motion? I, I will. <clears throat> okay. Okay, then it's been again approved for the minutes have been adopted. Uh, thank you. Our financial report, our treasurer is not on. We want you to pray for his. Is he on? I'm he is on. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Bill. I, I'm, I'm going to need to uh, ask everyone's indulgence tonight. Uh, my wife was in the emergency room for four days last week, and she's scheduled for brain surgery Thursday. So. I don't have a you know regular income statement, but uh, our bank account is in good shape, and the uh, contributions to the matching gift campaign, the the Drive to Thrive campaign, have been coming in steadily. I think we're at about thirty thousand dollars now, uh, moving toward a, a fifty or sixty thousand dollar goal, and. Uh, I don't mean that to uh, let anyone think that they can relax. Uh, we need to keep up the good work and, and uh, making those contributions either through the donate button on our uh, website or uh, checks addressed to the NOAA PO box uh, 331144 uh, Nashville 37203. Noah. So uh, keep, keep those checks coming. Thank you. You will hear a little more uh, about this uh, drive that we have on at the present time. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, Bill, do you want to say anything about person just the, about the dues and uh, turning dues and application and conflict of interest? Oh, uh, well, that, you know, certainly is, is sort of my a uh, regular uh, theme and uh, it is important. And, and I think I'm really going to hammer that uh, more next year as, as folks are renewing their memberships for 2022. 
Uh, I have not been able to get out uh, invoices for folks whose uh, dues are, are uh, expected by the end of the year, uh, but I hope to do that soon. Oh, okay, but well, thank you. Thank you, and I'll, I'll sign off now. Okay, you have our prayers for Margaret. Okay, thank you, Reverend Tom. Oh, oh, can I ask a quick question? Uh, yes, go this ahead. This is Jocelyn Imani. Hold on, let me get on camera. I just wanted to know before you leave, did the, did the dues for Riverside Chapel come in? Riverside Chapel SDA? I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, I can't. No, I just wondered if if that name that that name sounded familiar. We we requisitioned them a few months ago, but you know how that goes. Uh, okay. Well, maybe, thank you. Yeah, maybe I can check and and uh, put something. I believe they did. The, uh, I, okay. Yeah, I believe they did, but but we can check. Thank you for okay, asking. Okay. Awesome. God be with you and your family. Thank yes, you. Yes. Yes. Thank, uh, thank you, Bill. God mm -hmm. bless, Bill. This time, we're going to call on our education task force to, uh, as you know, we had a special town hall uh, meeting last Monday, and we're going to ask if they will just uh, take over. They have a few moments in which they can share with us with some reflections and action that was made. Uh, so Brian and your task force, along with uh, Liza, uh, at this time, is in your hands. Hey, thank you, and uh, good to see everybody. Um, I'm going to relocate one quick second. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so Noah uh, was a kind of a co-sponsor town hall that happened last Monday, the 6th. Uh, this was a state uh, it was an effort uh, by the state to try to get public input on their, their new, uh, their review of the state funding uh, process for education. Currently, what, what we have in place is called the basic education program. It's kind of outdated. It's definitely not equitable. And so NOAA has been pushing on this and this town hall was a really good opportunity for us to jump in and show some leadership on it. Uh, there was a lot of press um, or at least some, some really good press. Um, and there was a recording of the town hall and I'm gonna show you a few clips of that. Uh, you're gonna to get to see Robert Taylor um, and Claudia Cornelison, the A representative and Reverend Wiggins. So uh, I'm just gonna show you these clips, gonna share my screen. And then we're gonna hear from, oops, uh, if the host could give me, Screen screen sharing privileges, please. Um, uh, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and then we will hear from Reverend Wiggins and Lynn Hoyt after I uh, show you some clips. There we go. And I will also let you know that um, you're going to have to listen really closely, especially to Robert during certain parts of his his speech. Uh oh. Oh, okay, sorry. I think, Brian, because you have headphones on, that may be why we can't hear it. You may need to turn your headphones. It is very quiet. I don't know. Can, can people hear any better? Okay. Let me see if I can get us to a, a moment where he's a little louder. Yeah, so unfortunately this part is a little quiet. I'm going to fast forward 
to the next presenter I wanted to feature, um, Claudia. Sorry, just give me one second. This is going to be one portion of Claudia's. Actually, I think we could probably hear her entire piece. Um, there we go. Good evening. Um, my name is Claudia Cornellison. I'm a high school so English teacher here in Asheville. I'm a member of MNEA, which is yes. Great. And I'm here today to ask the state to fund. Mm -hmm. uh, no sound now. Education are absolutely insane. there it goes okay. while we were Thank learning you. at home technology was our students link to their classrooms but it's also linked to their pupils um, as of right now districts are relying upon local funding and donations to get the technology that they need for their students that just isn't working it's not working and i see it every single day in my classroom um, it looks like uh, wi-fi outages completely derailing, uh, derailing lessons. It looks like um, thousands of computers just sitting in classrooms and warehouses. This. It looks like students not being able to complete work at home and students not getting access to what they need to be successful on state testing. At the beginning of this year, I gave my students the math reading assessment. And this is meant to measure their college readiness and reading it's done on a computer. And during that day, we had the Wi-Fi going Can't hear Brian. As a result, I probably got an accurate read on about 15% of students. If I don't know where my students are at, then I can't serve them the way they deserve to be served. Without this funding for technology by the state, our students suffer. Um, we don't want to have to rely on local funding, one time donations. What do we want? Thank you very much. So if you didn't hear her, she just said, what do we want? We want a bigger pie. This was, this was our refrain uh, throughout the night. And um, it was echoed not only by NOAA speakers, but other speakers picked up on it as well. I'm now going to feature Reverend Wiggins. Um, you may be a little bit soft too, Reverend Wiggins, but I'm going to, if so, I think I might speed this up to the, to the end of your part. Let's go ahead and speed that up real quick. because <laughs> I, I hate to do this. I think that the recording just was not real strong in terms of the audio. Um, Trust me, this, this is not a pilot. And Mrs. Wynn, this is a delicious reminder that the people of Tennessee want a bigger pilot, much more educated overall, provide excellent Central education for every so those those are a couple of clips uh, again apologies for the sound but um i hope it gives you an idea of just kind of what the what the feeling was at the event uh we had good pretty good turnout and um you know this is just the start of what happens next but uh, I'm definitely gonna let Reverend Wiggins pick up um, and just talk about why we're pursuing this campaign. Um, and then Lynn Hoyt will talk. You're muted, Reverend Wiggins. Yep, I saw that, thank you. I just wanna say that uh, again, it was just a, a very dynamic <clears throat> and powerful presence by Noah. Um, uh, the presentations by NOAA uh, participants were just outstanding. They're uh, heartfelt and made great appeals uh, to uh, the commission, Commissioner Schwinn as well as uh, 
to Governor Lee that we need a bigger pie. Um, and a, a lot of the experiences made it more powerful that they, they were lived experiences from those who were speaking. And as I stated uh, yesterday, I, I was just so impressed by the voices of the community, those who were not uh, uh, from other community organizations and, and the community in general and the voices of, of the uh, young people and the children, uh, the young lady who uh, spoke so well about eloquently about uh, needing money for our supplies, bullying in school, uh, those uh, type of issues. So I was really impressed by uh, uh, her story. And, and I believe this was a, a, a very powerful time. Our, our, our children need uh, more love by the state. And, and love is shown by, not just by uh, words, uh, but, but, but love is an action verb. You got to show it by your actions. And, and that's what we're trying to say. We need more money for our children. Uh, Tennessee is fourth, 46 in the nation, uh, spending on education, and a lot of issues that, that we have. And, and I, I was impressed by Noah's impact. I was expecting a larger crowd. And I, I think with a larger crowd, Noah would have even a greater impact. Uh, one of the uh, community uh, members or leaders said that uh, they were disappointed about the white attendees far number and the black attendees. And with this event being in the African-American church in the heart of the black community. Um, and I think that, that Noah can even have more power, use his power and influence and recognition even more to have a more impactful presence in the African-American, Hispanic, Latino, Asian communities. Uh, we need to increase our membership with uh, black and brown uh, communities. But I do understand and I hear the, the, the voice that we, uh, that we need to start first at home. Uh, I think what has hurt uh, us in the black community is that uh, a lot of people do not see black faces in leadership positions. So we got to start here within the no organization to uh, uh, inspire, encourage, support uh, African-Americans to take more of a leadership role. But uh, again, I, I think this was a wonderful, outstanding uh, event. Noah was, was very powerful in his presence, and I was just so proud to be a part of this. Thank you, Reverend Wiggins. Um, my name is Lynn Hoyt. Um, I'm the co-chair of the State Action Committee. And just kind of uh, reflecting back on the video, when Reverend Wiggins handed the pie to Commissioner Schwinn, Schwinn it was just like icing on the cake, if you will. I, everything was so well coordinated. The whole pie theme, um, I, I encourage you all to watch the video if you have a moment to do so, because what do we want? We need a bigger pie. The whole room said it. And people were echoing those um, those thoughts through their own uh, through their own speeches, even if they were not, um, you know, representatives from NOAA. And it just everything was just so coordinated. And when Reverend Wiggins passed that pie, the whole room interrupt just erupted. Um, it was it was it was really meaningful. And so I do want to just kind of frame out this idea that NOAA. You know, when we think about all the committee work that we do, um, when you have inadequate funding in public education, it's another way of setting our children up for low paying jobs, for the inability to afford a home and uh, for involvement in the criminal justice system. And so I really feel like our work in the education task force is full circle to what NOAA advocates for in order to stop those outcomes because we can't give up on our kids in Tennessee. We must do more to invest in the future. There's not enough pie. They can't just re-slice it. It has to be bigger. We are at the bottom of the nation in funding and it's embarrassing quite frankly. So that is where we are in uh, getting an ask. This is, I'm gonna do the ask tonight. Um, dropping a few things in the chat. I can do this, uh, I think, um, Brian, or you can, but uh, we do the facts and resource um, list. There is a fact list to help folks, but what we're going to ask you to do is um, to email Commissioner Schwinn 
and ask her for a bigger pie. Um, there is, uh, again, there's a resource list. Um, I don't know if that's dropped yet. Let me go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and drop the template in first, if that makes okay. sense. And then there is also a letter template that you all can use. We want this to be personal. Um, so please feel free to use all these resources, but frame it up in your own story. How, how does um, an educated populace um, affect you and your family and your community? Um, and, and write Commissioner Schwinn a letter, um, an email. There is an email that uh, they are responding to um, around this BEP survey and the community, um, uh, the community meeting. So that is my ask of everyone tonight. Um, it is a powerful statement to come from uh, NOAA and uh, not just the education task force, but the entire organization um, to, to speak uh, your power. And um, so I appreciate the time. Um, to do that. I don't know if we're going to actually pause and maybe everyone take a little moment to review and possibly draft that uh, email. And then hopefully after this meeting is over, if you don't have time to finish it right now, please reflect. And, and we would love for you to push that email send button and advocate for our kids and school funding. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn and Reverend Wiggins. Um, Reverend Thompson, do we have a few minutes to kind of allow folks to go ahead and write the letter right now? Yes, we have, you have uh, eight more minutes All right. on this section. Maybe we should just take like three minutes to, to finish this up and we'll just kind of be a few minutes ahead if that sounds good. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, and thanks, you know, there's a couple points here in the chat while you're writing your letters to Commissioner Schwinn. Um, Eugene Sabri, who's one, our new organizer, he is uh, our, he's also associate pastor at Jefferson Street Missionary Baptist and was able to help us get the space to hold this event. So we're really grateful for that. Uh, and he did mention in the chat that we had a large virtual audience, which is awesome. Um, so we're grateful for all of that um, and grateful to see a lot of you guys turn out either in person or online. Um, <clears throat> so maybe we just give you another minute or so. Do we have time for a quick question? I was going to say, I think we've got some time for questions. <clears throat> uh, I'm asking this primarily because uh, I'm, I don't have the uh, longevity in Nashville that most of you do. And I, uh, but as a former educator, I'm well versed in the battles um, that are going on here and where I taught when we lived outside of Tennessee. I do not want anybody to misunderstand the intent of this question and it is merely a request for information. In all of the conversations and debates that those of you who have been involved in regarding education and the sorry state of uh, education in uh, Tennessee and, and uh, uh, Davidson County, has anybody ever tried to push the issue of, are the schools spending the money they have wisely? As opposed to assuming, yes, of course they are, and they need more. I can I can tell you, Kevin, not to cut you short, but we are absolutely aware of of that question. Um, the I had someone else could speak more eloquently about it, but districts have uh, what's called a school based funding model, and so the administration, you know, allots a certain amount with some categories in place, and then principals get to determine exactly how those funds are spent. Um, I don't know if Lynn or Liza would want to speak any more to that, just kind of the, if it would help to answer Kevin's question or not. Well, well I, go Lynn. I was going to say, I'll drop the video of the student-based budget process into the chat and that would help. I'll do that. Anything you want to say? Oh, I'm sorry. That, thank you for that, uh, that advice, but I'm well aware of the, the BEP, if that's what it is. Uh, no, this is a metro, this is a metro formula. This is about okay, metro. That, right. But it's still the bottom line, unless I'm totally wrong, is 
the presumption is we mm -hmm. need more money rather mm -hmm. than is there a way to produce cost efficiencies that would allow MNPS to spend money on things they have not been able to up until now? Um, I would I would jump in there because MNPS has been doing that for years and they um, under Dr. Battle, they have reduced and reduced the money they spend on administration um, and uh, we spend, I mean, the state gives us $5,000 per kid per year in Nashville and the National norm is more like $14,000 for what is spent per kid per school year. So ten, not every county in Nashville gets the same amount as Nashville, but um, that $5,000 is, is very, very, very short of what it actually costs to educate a child in these times. Can I, can I speak? Thank you. That's good to know. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I, also, I also had extensive long term experience in education and um, worked in metro schools. Um, yes, I saw wasted money, but I think the waste came because since they don't have enough, they grab these simple fixes that are cheaper than really paying for what you need to do. Uh, I saw that over and over again. We want, we're gonna buy this program and it's gonna fix stuff. Well, no program is gonna fix stuff. So the programs were a lot cheaper than really doing what you need to do, but we don't have the money to do what you need to do. That's my take anyway. Thank you, Pat. Bravo. Uh, I, I wanna, we, we do need to move on. Kevin, I'd put my email address in the chat. I'd love to do a one-on-one -on -one with you to just kind of learn more about your experience and you know maybe answer some questions as well. Um, but I did want to just technically real quick, I think someone copied, uh, maybe cut, not just copied, but cut the uh, text of the letter to Commissioner Schwinn. Does anybody, is anybody else seeing that? And the Google Doc here, I think all we have is please send an email to the Department of Education Commissioner Schwinn at, uh, I'm just wondering if you happen to be the person who cut instead of copied, Maybe go back. If everyone could just hit the the back button on your Google Doc, that would probably help us bring it back. Um, <laughs> this is just one of those things with this kind of uh, with Google Docs. It sometimes is confusing, I think. But um, so there it is. It's back there it is. Yay! I love it um that was gratifying okay so i think do we do we have any last questions on on what we're doing here um any technical questions um please definitely get in touch with me or get in touch with lynn or liza or reverend wiggins you know if you have any questions about it we would love to talk to you okay um and i think reverend Thompson, it might be time is it time to move on to the next piece Yes, we have one minute. Okay. Happy to, happy to, uh, all right. Well, maybe we should just make efficient use of our time. I'll just, um, if there are no questions, um, you know, what, what we did on last Monday night um, with, with the leaders that were involved was we organized people, right? That is one of the things that NOAA does. And we, we uh, that's when we're doing our job well, we are organizing people, we're turning them out, we're tapping into their self-interest. We know what our organization's concerns are, what our self-interest is. Not only do we need to organize people, but if we're going to be a powerful organization, we've gotta be concerned about organizing. Anybody? Money. Money. Thank you, Kay. Yes, we've got to be concerned about organizing money. Uh, we are not a charity that runs on just the goodness of some well-meaning people. We are a powerful organization, a power organization, and that means we invest in what we believe in. 
And I think everyone on this call and everyone that, you know, calls himself a NOAA member is somebody who believes deeply in what we do, uh, believes deeply in the power of people um, to address issues at the community level, to address systemic issues. So we are in this season right now of, uh, of our fundraiser, and we have done a pretty solid job so far on it, and we still have a little ways to go. And, um, you know, I just want to I want to turn it over to a couple of our leaders who are going to talk about why they give. And then I want to, um, we're going to pick it up after that and, and get you guys into some breakout groups to talk uh, and answer a few questions about why it's important for us to be involved in um, building power through organizing money. So um, I'm going to ask if Charlotte West and uh, I'm sorry. No, I think I think Grace Brady and I have Pat somebody McDonald. else on. Pat McDonald. Pat McDonald. Thank you, Mike. And if Pat McDonald, if you guys, whoever wants to uh, jump in first and just talk about why this is important to you, uh, why why investing in NOAA is so important to you. Well, I'll go first. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Uh, I have been working with NOAA for several years, and I was with the organization that was working prior to it became the, to, to the time it became NOAA. So I was generally uh, concerned with making sure that I was aware of what was going on in Nashville and trying to find out ways that I could help improve it. So as a part of NOAA, and uh, one of my focuses of, was, was uh, affordable housing, but it's also education. And I felt like uh, for whatever opportunities I can, I, can, I, I should uh, donate whatever I can. So even though we had this major fundraiser this time, this is not the first time I've given money. So it's on my list. And I think that it's worthwhile my efforts that I can contribute to making sure that there is success in this organization. Um, I, you know, I wish I knew how long I'd been involved in NOAA. <laughs> I know it keeps it, the, the time link keeps increasing. So, I, you know, I don't really want three, four years, something like that. And I was drawn to NOAA because of the issue of affordable housing. But as I learned more and more and went to some trainings, I became kind of a believer in needing po <clears throat> power and money that you don't just elect somebody to be your representative without staying on their backs because they respond to whoever's pushing them. And you know, for an organization to work, it's gotta have money. Now I hate asking for money, but if I believe in something, I don't mind giving money. So um, yeah, don't ask me to be the fundraiser. I will be glad to give money. But if I, if I believe in it, I feel like I need to, you know, put my heart where it, where it belongs. Thank you, Grace, and thank you, Pat. Um, you guys just really i think you just made it really practical that this is it's a practical matter that we um have resources right and that we can organize so it's not uh, we know what we're doing and we know that it it costs money um it costs money to pay the rent it costs money to um pay for trainings and and so many things so um and thanks to everybody who's already given. I know some folks on this, uh, on this, in this meeting tonight have already given. We want everyone to, to feel like they can give um, that's on the call tonight and more so. Um, but what we want to do right now um, is, to, is to break folks up into groups of four. Uh, that should be coming up in a minute. And to answer a few questions among each other, you're going to have um, 10 minutes. And I'm going to put these questions in the chat here. And I just want to talk about them real quickly. Uh, they, they're probably pretty self-explanatory, but um, let's see, everyone. So um, what did you hear? You know, what did you just hear Grace Brady and Pat McDonald say about organizing money or anything I may have said about why we do it? Um, how do you feel about asking people to invest? You know, I think Pat just said something that a lot of us feel we hate doing it, but 
we'd love to, to flesh that out just a little bit. Um, I just want to say that like, if you ask somebody for money, I hope some of you have had this experience. You ask somebody for money and they say yes, and they're excited and they want to give what you asked for, or maybe they want to give more. I think, I think we can all say that that's what we hope to get when we, when we do this kind of thing. I think that's a good reinforcement. So um, I hope that we all get to have some of those experiences, but that's the second question. How do you feel? The third thing is, could you ask people that you know, could you ask five people for $100 each uh, to invest $100 each in NOAA? Um, just real quick, um, you could write the names of the people down for yourself. We're not asking you to share them, but um, you know, we'd like you to think about this. If everyone on this call asks five people for $100 each, right? That's 500. You multiply that by 40 people, 41. That's over $20,000 that we will have raised just this, through this effort, right? So we are about building power. $20,000 sounds pretty powerful to me. And you all look like a pretty powerful group of people. So I think uh, let's have this conversation with each other right now, if it sounds good to everybody. And then we'll recap and just kind of come back together and see how it went. Um, you should be getting some instructions on going into a breakout room here. Yes. All right. Just feel free to join and um, have a good conversation. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Morley and Phyllis, are, is everything okay? Did you see the option to join a room? Okay, great. Phyllis, do you need me to assign you to a room?
Hi, Mercedes. I am going to try to assign you to a room. I was in room four, but I was having difficulty with my microphone. So I had to close out. I'd like to go back to group four, please. Okay, I'll do Thank that. You. Sure. Did you get the prompt? Okay.
Hi, Delana. We are wrapping up um, our breakout session now, but I can assign you to the room that I'm in. We're talking about raising money for our Drive to Thrive fundraiser. Were you were you there earlier? I can't hear you. You're um, paused. You're on mute. All right, I will. Okay. All right, is everyone back in? I think we might be missing two or three people. Hopefully we didn't lose two or three people with that. I know it's... Uh, well, Laura, she had to go pick up her husband from the airport. Okay, thank you, Reverend Wiggins. Um, well, so had, had Reverend Thompson, you're on mute. We have roughly three minutes before we go to the next session. All right. Well, let's wrap up. Um, can we get like one or two people just to say how that went for you? And if you could, if your group found five people each. I group had four people. Okay. And, and we, uh, the majority of us kind of feel the same way or a mixture that it's easy for us to give, but when we're asking other people to, to give, we want them to, to have knowledge and information about what we're doing. Yes. And so, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna say it for our group, when we go out to groups and where we speak, we need to let people know what we're doing, what our successes are, and what some of the struggles still are and why we're still in the game after right. going back for some of us about 11 years when we first started meeting before Noah got his name. And so awesome. I'll stop right there. But that we do agree we will, some of us will ask some people to give personally, but we also pair that with knowledge about what, what is taking place. Thank you, Reverend Merritt. We, so Mike just dropped a uh, one pager of our 2021 successes yeah. into the chat. Um, that was something also that, um, that Rutherford Overton brought up in our group that we need to, people need to know what they're investing in. What, you know, what does, what does your organization do? Why should I, you know, that's important, right? They should also know why you care. I think that's probably most important, but this is something that's going to help back up and just add that extra chunk of evidence that we're we're who we say we are. Arlene, you had a question? Uh, not a question. I wanted to say that we talked about um, the strategy of encouraging people to make a monthly donation if they can't um, drop a single check. And um, I know that's what I do. And um, I believe Mike said that I should encourage others to do as well because it really helps an organization when they know how much money is coming in every month. So I am someone who would um, have a hard time asking someone for 
$100, but I would not have a hard time asking someone if they would consider donating $10 a month. And of course, if you can do the math quickly, that's 120, not 100. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. That's very helpful. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Okay. I think we, any, anything else anybody needs to say um, before we move on? I just wanted yes. to, oh, go I just wanted to reinforce what Troy said about helping people understand what we do. And it's, I think it's a little harder to help people understand what NOAA does as opposed to something like, um, we're collecting at church for the Afghan families moving in. You can give somebody a real easy, quick picture on that. NOAA is a much more complicated um, type organization. Yeah. I want to say that there is a one-on-one -on -one element to this kind of conversation that you have. So it's not your, you got to be clear that it's about a relationship, right? We're not, we're not going in to, to put any sort of relationship at risk. Um, so you need to be kind of mindful that we want to hold on to this person. We're not just asking for money and we're actually asking for the relationship too. So one thing our group talked about too, is just the difference in saying, would you make a donation and would you make an investment? You mm -hmm. know, for me, I, I want to invest in the future of this city because I don't like the way it's going. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I want to invest in changing that. And I want to invest in my faith, you know, which has to do with justice. So those are my kind of investments. I donated tonight. Good. My name is Alice Anderson. So I started a monthly donation and I was in the group with Arlene and Irvin. Great. Hey, Alice. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. You're welcome. Uh, the, the last thing I'll say, uh, Reverend Thompson, is just like, remember to seal the deal if you can after you've had this conversation. You can just say, just visit noatn.org backslash donate. Once you've got, once they've said, I will give you $50, I'll give you a hundred, I'll give you 500. Just remember, here's the, here's where you can do it. So send them a text or something. So they have it in writing. You can do that too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask with respect to uh, some special reports. And uh, Mike, if you want to explain, we uh, had discussed with some of the chairperson of the task force what the, their task would be at this time. Yes, just, just briefly, we have talked to the task force chairs and we've asked them to just give a three or four key things that they see their task force has accomplished this, this year. Like what happened this year? And you just saw the... Uh, 2021 successes document that's dropped in there. And some of those are mentioned there, but we wanted to hear from the task forces, just what are three or four key things that you see that your task force has accomplished this year? So um, let's start with, uh, how about if we start with affordable housing? Okay, yes. Good evening, everyone. And I want to start out in talking about what we have accomplished and the successes that we have made is because of all the hours that volunteers, you know, put into, you know, the effort and especially looking at affordable housing. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, is a, a success for us that uh, we had our town hall meeting and that uh, uh, from last year, Mayor Cooper made a commitment and he did follow through with raising the Barnes Fund from 20 million to 40 million in uh, money. Uh, then uh, another thing that this, uh, the Affordable Housing Task Force um, has been working on is to, uh, you know, the mayor's commitment for a separate department for affordable housing and then also homelessness. Um, you know, with this separate department, the mayor has already committed and has hired a di uh, director for uh, affordable housing. Um, he made that commitment for two employees, uh, the director and a data 
a specialist person. Uh, then another commitment uh, that uh, the mayor has made with NOAA was to meet, and we met last month uh, with members of the NOAA staff, uh, Judge Rachel Bell, uh, the um, uh, director of Metro Actions, and other stakeholders in the eviction prevention uh, uh, process. And, and our goal is to help to reduce uh, evictions by identifying system barriers that help to um, reduce the backlog or any uh, bottlenecks uh, that makes it difficult for tenants and landlords to receive uh, assistance. So, um, Kay, is there anything else you want to add? You're on mute, Kay. You're on mute. Gotcha, yes. Uh, the last item is that the mayor uh, committed to an investment of funding a long-term housing plan. And this has been NOAA's platform for at least six years, if not longer. Uh, and so, uh, Work should begin on that through the uh, planning department in the next year. So two of our pushes uh, for the last six plus years, a Department of Housing with, with experienced staff and uh, a, an actual long-term housing operational and funding plan to be created. Those were big wins for us this year. Thank you. Okay, uh, how about criminal justice? Okay, Jane, did you wanna speak about criminal justice? I think you're on mute. I, I'm, I muted myself. <laughs> criminal justice has focused primarily on HEALS, which is health engagement and liaison services. That is a response uh, by mental health professionals and, and a medic to persons who have called an emergency crisis line like 911 or suicide uh, uh, line. Uh, right now, the only thing in town is called Partners in Care, which is operated jointly by the police and the mental health co-op. Now, we, NOAA, are on that stakeholders Partners in Care committee sort of like an oversight type of committee. And while some of the statistics are, are looking promising, there are only two precincts that are being serviced and they're only doing this Monday through Friday on two shifts. Um, they're uh, admitting already, even the, the guy in charge at the police department, David Imhoff is admitting that heals would really help them expand that program. So we're trying to do that. We almost reached a point with city council last spring uh, by getting about 17 or 18 council members to approve funding for HEALS. So we're gonna keep pushing for that. And we'll be having a webinar February 3rd to get more people to be educated about how HEALS is similar to CAHOOTS in Eugene, Oregon. So that's one big thing we're doing. Uh, we think that, that Nashville is ready for this and that it would be a much, a much uh, better program than what we've got already, a much safer program with no cops involved. Uh, the other thing we did to sort of start that out, to introduce that whole concept was a press conference on 321 when we were talking about the murder of um, Nika Holbert just the day before. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. She was at a Dollar General store and uh, that was a, an awful incident. Then we had a mentally ill person, Melissa Wooden, who was shot in the back. Then there was uh, a young man who was schizophrenic who was um, in a standoff with the police. He ended up being shot by the police. Mm -hmm. So there have been a total of nine people who have been shot by the police this year in Nashville, which is a high number. It's not never been that high. Uh, Tennessee ranks the third in the nation in terms of violent crimes um, and homicides. So we really have to do something different in Tennessee. 
And even though we're working, trying to get the police to change their attitude, uh, we're, we're gonna have to be on the vanguard and take some alternative, uh, some alternative actions towards showing them a different way. So that's what we're sort of proposing. The other big thing is that we're looking at the courts, uh, the judges, the bail system, um, and how these are not working for people, especially people who are black or people who are of color and people who are poor. Uh, bail is just a, a real burden mm -hmm. on poor people. Mm -hmm. So we've got a survey that we had asked people to, to fill out about 165 uh, people have done that, but we still need more surveys completed. So if you haven't done that, go to the NOAA website and complete that survey because that will help us then with our judges candidates forms that we're having um, in March and April. <laughs> so those are the things that we're really focusing the, the most on. Okay, would education like to go? Sure. Um, you have already heard about our town hall, which was is our most recent and um, delightful success. Um, but I'll fill you in on some of the, uh, the other things from this year. Um, our academics committee, if you read the paper this morning, there was a fabulous article in the paper, really from our, uh, written by Megan Mangrum, but from uh, the information from our academics committee concerning racial disparities in advanced academics in MMPS. And this is what our committee has been working on. So the, the article was published today. There were two, I didn't get to stay long enough, but I know they were wonderful speeches at the um, school board meeting tonight, supporting eliminating the disparities in advanced academics. And there is a, um, uh, uh, oh, what do you call those things? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I can't think of the word, but the school board's going to have a proposition. Resolution. That, what is it? Uh, resolution. Resolution. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the school board has a resolution and process to define um, next steps in advanced ed academics. So this is a very important area that our academics committee has had success in. Um, and is still, we're still looking forward to more success in that area. Um, breaking the school to prison pipeline is the issue that we started with in the education task force, actually before we even had an education task force. And um, the way to do that is to change the disciplinary procedures that we have in school and use alternative behavior management practices that do not end up with suspensions and expulsions of kids from school. Um, and these are, sometimes we find these terms confusing. Um, what we use, our committee is called the SEL committee, social emotional learning, and restorative practices are what we want to see in our metro schools. Now, um, the education task force has pushed hard enough that pieces of SEL programming have been in the budget request of the school administration for several years, but because of budget shortages, they've never actually been funded until this year. So after all these years, we now have advocacy centers funded with an advocacy coach in every elementary school in Nashville. 72 elementary schools in MMPS now have an advocacy center and an advocacy coach. This is a big, big success. And we believe and hope that there will be restorative practice assistance in every middle and high school beginning next year. That's next year, but it's looking like that's gonna happen as well. So this, this is big, big progress. Um, 
Uh, and as you heard me say, and I guess you guys know this, um, SEL was not put in place because of budget shortages, okay? So now we have a state action committee and their goal is to get greater state funding for metro schools, but really all the schools in the state. Um, the big event that state action did earlier in the year was the day of power and prayer. And this was such an ambitious, big event. It was a statewide event. State action collaborated with our sister organizations, Micah in Memphis and Caleb in Chattanooga and had um, a, a live feed on Facebook from all, all, from all the way across the state, from all three places. And it was a very powerful program um, that a lot of people saw, um, but was really <laughs> targeted to the governor and our legislators to ask them to put our children first, to fund our, what our Tennessee children need to be able to thrive. It was a very ambitious event and very powerful. And um, you can't draw a straight line. There's not a straight line, but this year the governor has decided to look at the entire state funding formula again. And um, I, I was gonna say more about the town hall, but that has been covered very well. And um, I think we were all um, pretty excited at how successful the town hall was and that we really um, had the ear of the commissioner of education. So um, there's lots of work to do. And the comments that Lynn Hoyt asked each of you to send in are really important because they are really reading every comment and they're feeding those to the committees that are studying this. And when we ask about, the commissioner is not really the one that makes the laws, okay? So <laughs> she's listening, but we have to influence the legislators. And what people are saying is the best way to do that is with all these comments, emails, to, to put the concrete evidence there that this is what the people of Tennessee want. Um, so, I hope I haven't left anything out, um, but it's been been a big, good year for the education task force. And you've worked hard. All of our task forces have worked hard. Really Marlene. hard, really hard. <laughs> Marlee, would you like to uh, talk about economic equity? I'm and so proud of all the work y'all have done. I'm like, I, I was at that <laughs> event. I was at that event. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been a good year. Uh, I would say so E and J briefly, uh, the biggest thing. So we had a moral um, moral budget, a town hall around the moral budget, um, because everything that we have just talked about is interconnected with what we choose to fund. And that's just a linchpin whenever um, economic equity and jobs task force gets together. It's less that we're creating our own campaigns and more how do we lift up the economic component of everything that's being talked about because it comes down to what our local Davidson County elected officials and then our state elected officials choose to fund. And so the BEP, we are going to be all over that and thinking about that. And I was talking to some people about it earlier today because in January, really, these decisions are going to get made fast. And it's not just that they're going to change it. One of our big concerns is they're going to make it easier to give at public dollars to charter schools and then to or to vouchers and then those will go to to private schools and all over the place and it could be absolutely devastating to just our local community schools those of us and you know, my kids are metro schools i know others are um just what it would mean in the community but um so the conversation of why the work we're doing statewide is so important it's less nashville and more how does that impact kind of our smaller communities a lot of these state leaders are from so y'all are going to hear about that in january um we're going to keep talking about a moral budget um, because I want to just lean in on one of Noah's strengths is that we are the moral conscience of Nashville, but we live it publicly out loud. We say to our elected officials, do we really want to do that? Do we really want to feel good about passing those laws and just saying it publicly? So these town halls that we continue to hold are important. So I wanted to put on everyone's calendar tonight, January 27th. I know that's after the holidays, however you celebrate them. It's 
maybe after some good drinking, however you celebrate that. But in the future, January 27th, um, it's going to be a Thursday night. We are going to start having a conversation about East Bank. Um, and again, this impacts affordable housing. It impacts a lot of our different groups. Um, but working with other folks in the city, there are 300 acres over there that are going to be quickly developed. And while some of us have been dealing with the pandemic and just hoping we keep folks employed and keep the lights on and keep our kids safe to get back into schools with teachers, developers and other business leaders have been busy you know, making rough draft renderings and looking at traffic studies, and they've been making all sorts of decisions behind closed doors, and they're going to make some quick decisions about those 300 acres. But I want everyone on the call to know we as taxpayers, we own 100 of those 300 acres, Metro owns. So we need to quickly start talking about that and holding elected officials accountable. Don't give away our 100 acres. Those are ours. What could we do with that for affordable housing? What could we do with that for community centers? What could we do with that for our people in Nashville. We don't need more gulch. I don't need more tech bros from the West Coast coming for $300,000, you know, 100 square foot condos. I don't, they're like, lovely, that's great. They'll find a place to live. I don't need to create that for them. So anyhow, that's one of the things E&J, we're proud of what we've done. Looking forward, really, we got to get on it quickly in January to stop some of the madness that we see happening in Nashville. Thank you. What time you. does it start? It will be 6.30 in the evening, but we don't have a location yet. So just save the date, 6.30, January 27th. It will be in East Nashville somewhere. Got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. How about IVE, Integrated Voter Engagement? Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Um, we, um, uh, first of all, I want to give a big thank you to all of our steering committee members who have met um, uh, at each time that we've, uh, we've called for a meeting to come together and to uh, help us really build our infrastructure. And that's kind of where we spent a lot of our time this year, getting more organized, getting people in place to, uh, to be leaders in, in different capacities. And uh, while we've helped out on some of the, the, the events NOAA has had in general, I would say the key achievement of our working group for 2021 was the launch of our core team uh, initiative. Uh, at our core team retreat, which we had uh, sort of mid-summer, there were 29 congregations at the that were present. Now, these core teams are now at various stages of development. Some of them are very active. Some of them are just starting to get going. Some of them have made a commitment to start a team. And so our core team uh, co coordinators, uh, Susie Wilcox and Shayna Solomon, are doing a really good job in trying to reach out to all of the core teams to find out where they are, where we can support them, how we can help them to build and grow and so that we'll there'll be a stronger mobilizing force for NOAA uh, going into 2022. And so speaking of 2022, I'll just touch on one thing real quick. Uh, this past Sunday, we actually got together for a live in-person meeting. So it was great to, to be amongst everybody uh, live and live in color, so to speak. So, uh, what we sort of talked about were goals for 2022. And a key goal is going to be to build stronger relationships with our task forces in an attempt to, to better integrate their issues and actions with our education, ed, engagement, and mobilization efforts. So specific to this point, we decided that our first initiative is going to be to reach out to the Criminal Justice Task Force to better understand how we can work with them regarding the upcoming uh, judicial elections. So Jane and Sean, y'all can expect a phone call and we'll try to get the ball rolling on some things. But going forward, the idea would be to work with each task force to understand their issues and determine which of the tools in our toolbox, which could include you know, deep neighborhood canvassing, surveys, phone banking, texting, or just to name a few, could, could best be used to help an issue gain traction. So with 2022 being an election year, we're looking forward to the opportunity and the challenge in helping mobilize our members in the community around the issues that will result in positive change. That's it. Hey, Reverend Thompson, I think we're done. Did I skip? Oh, I think, uh, Brian, were you gonna say something brief about the young adults? Very brief. Um, so Young Adult Caucus is at a place where we are just kind of seeing what we want to do for 2022 it's you know this is sort of a time of reforming and uh examining kind of what does it mean to build power uh for kind of that segment of folks who are 18 to 34 years old and uh to do it you know as a 
as a piece of the whole Noah pie, or let me not say Noah pie, but the Noah puzzle. Um, there's a lot of powerful work that needs to be done. I think that everyone is feeling like uh, we're looking at younger people, you know, we're looking at that segment and saying, what, what are we going to do? What are y'all going to do? And, and how can we do it together? So I'm doing some one-on-ones, like just in this moment and getting to know some folks and kind of see where, where people want to go and, uh, and just to keep things moving. And I, I think that, you know, in, in a couple of months, we'll probably have um, some beginnings of a, of a plan for the year um, mapped out a little better. Okay, I believe that's it. And Mike, it's, it's time yeah. for evaluation. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, actually, I think Carlene Dowell was posting something really quick in the chat that had something to do with criminal, our criminal justice task force. Carlene, do you want to say something quickly about that? You're on mute. You're on mute. I'm sorry, trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, yeah, we're having a, a, a screening of a, a short documentary. It's not in full use yet. They're doing end of screenings with different um, churches. Uh, I found out about this through the UUA. And um, so we're doing this on September or um, January 16th at our church, uh, First Unitarian Universalist Church of Nashville, 1808 Woodmont Boulevard. And we've invited the Criminal Justice Task Force to come and talk about the work they're doing. Uh, the documentary is about um, the uh, use of misdemeanors uh, to uh, the prison pipeline to get people as the gateway into the prison system and the history of how that's racially used uh, to um, incarcerate people that don't need to be incarcerated. I didn't realize some of the statistics and it's really uh, eye-opening uh, documentary. It's uh, really well done. So we'd invite all of you to come if you wanna come. Very good, thank you. Well, everybody knows our four stages of evaluation. The first one is how are you feeling as you leave this meeting? And we prefer that you not say hungry. Okay, um, what uh, put it in the chat? One or two words uh, about your feeling. What are you feeling here? Kay Bauer said proud. All right, Reverend Wiggins says encouraged. Reverend Wiggins, what are you encouraged about? Just the uh, energy from the people, the uh, the voices of commitment, the spirit of commitment. Very encouraged by that. Great. And Kay, what, what are you proud about, Kay? You, you put it in capital letters, so you're really proud. Oh, I, I didn't mean to hit that cap lock, but I am very proud <laughs> of the accomplishments, of the okay. accomplishments. Uh, uh, it's, it's quite impressive, and uh, it, gives, it gives me um, energy and uh, puts gas in the tank to stay with the work. I think we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, it's impressive. We just, uh, we want, I feel like we need some billboards uh, from <laughs> Memphis to Chattanooga. Great, great. Well, I see just a couple of others here quickly. Marley said humbled. That's a, that's a good one. Why, why is that Marley? I think all of it, the amount of work it takes to do one of the things that we talked about <laughs> and we just rattled them all off. It's a lot of work that everyone's putting into after their day job, after loving on their grandkids, after doing all the life that we do. So I'm just humbled by the amount of work that that y'all put into our community to make it better. It's it's impressive to see. And last one, maybe Susie Wilcox is in awe. I like that word, awe. I would say for the same reason that everyone else said, just to hear all the passion and effort and time and love you put into the work and what you accomplished. Great, great. Thank you. Now, some of y'all got away without putting a word in, but I'm not going to call on you. The second, second part of our evaluation is just um, performance. How did our meeting go? And one thing we always look at is, did we start on time? Yes. All right. Are we ending on time as long as I don't take too long? Yes. Yes. Why, why is that important? It honors the time and uh, it, it honors the time and commitment of the people involved. 
It honors our time and commitment, and it also shows we can hold ourselves accountable. If we cannot hold ourselves accountable, how can we hold the mayor accountable? So um, anything else about performance? There's always a lot more than just the, the time that was involved. Uh, did this agenda work for us? Was there, um, are you leaving feeling like you've accomplished something? Mm -hmm. If there was one high point for this meeting, what would it be? You can either speak it out or, or put it in the chat. For me, uh, it was a small, a small group discussion thing. That was about, good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jane Borum said the fundraising breakouts were good. Okay, good. All right, anybody else a high point? Arlene says, I loved hearing about everything Noah has done this year. Marley agrees, hearing the year and the recaps. Reports from the task forces, Martha says, good, high points. If there's one thing we would change for next time, what would it be? That we be in person and have dinner? Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> What what's one yeah. thing? Let's see. Oh, Brian says meet in person. Marley says treats. That's I right. like Normally somebody from no Martha says have somebody from Noah run for mayor. <laughs> Out oh. a few people in mine. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, we'll we'll be talking about that at some point. <laughs> okay. Anybody anybody else a uh, uh, thing to change for next time? How about tension? Where was tension in our meeting? And as you know, tension can be a good thing. It's not necessarily bad. Where was tension in this meeting that might make us act differently than we did before? Mar Martha says money. Mm -hmm. There is tension around money. We need to recognize that, right? Is I any time the, we start, uh, go, go ahead, whoever that was. Uh, that was me, Eugene. I was just gonna say, uh, for me, there was positive tension in the opening statement of, by Reverend Wiggins, who I need how Noah is viewed by, by some and our need to propel others toward uh, being viewed so that other people in the community can see that they also have a place within Noah. Okay, good. And Arlene, I don't understand your comment exactly. You wanted time to do the ask from Lynn Hoyt. Lynn had asked us to write to... Um, oh, uh, oh, okay. Oh, I understand. And, and it, it wasn't quiet enough for me. So okay. I would have liked five minutes in quiet and then okay. I could have gotten it off. All right, that's a good thing for us to remember for next time. Any other tension? Mm -hmm. Well, I wanna, I wanna comment on that real quick because I agree with Arlene. I, I did do it, but I did it while other stuff was going on because you know if you wanna write a personal note, you have to take a little bit more time so good okay um, but I, I hope people send those letters I've, I've got mine ready to go but i'm going to review it before i send it yeah okay very good thank I, you all so i would personally like uh just maybe 30 sec 30 to 60 seconds just to appeal to people to respond to my emails and to also email me or call me to schedule one-on-ones i have an abundance of free time the rest of this week and next week going into the holiday. And I would love to spend that time meeting with the exec board and other members of NOAA. And I know you put your telephone number and your email in the chat earlier, would you do it again? Um, sure, just very quickly, the biggest job that Eugene has right now is one-on-ones. We had asked him to do 20 one-on-ones a week. <laughs> and he's been emailing some of you folks and you ain't emailing back. So we're gonna send people out to find you. Um, the fourth thing that in our last thing in our evaluation is simply a political learning. And that just means where are we in our work in the city? And I was thinking about what's been coming up and what we've already seen some of, and that's holidays. We have some holidays that have just passed. And we have some that are, that are coming up and holiday, you know, is actually a shortening of holy day, the phrase holy day. And I did something, I looked up what holy means and it means something that's sacred. And it comes from an ancient word that means whole, not just holy like we think about it, but whole, like being a whole person. And how we continue to work for justice in this, in this city is very connected to something sacred and something that makes us all whole again. So I hope you have a good holiday 
in the best sense of the holy day that you need. Thank you, Reverend Thompson. All right, thank you. Uh, Jane, I don't know if you got my uh, chat to you. Would you mind closing us in prayer? Oh, I, I didn't see that, but I can, sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's bow our heads, everybody. Gracious God, we come to you tonight humbled by everyone's work and by all the need in our community. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we feel like we're stressed and just can't get everything done that you would like us to do. So Lord, help us take time during these holy days to ponder, reflect about what's behind these holy days, the actions of holy characters in our different traditions, the beauty of light, the beauty of birth, the beauty of wonder. Help us to stop and, and actually be a part of your beautiful world so that we don't get caught up in the busyness of it. Help us to see you as our guide, as our spiritual strength, as our counselor, as the one who loves us more than anything else. And help us then, Lord, to show that love to one another. Send us into the night as your children who are making this world what you would want it to be. We pray these things in all that is good and holy. Amen. 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 God bless everybody.